Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, and in this episode, I hope to show you how to use Photoshop files in your Muse website. So Photoshop, of course, owned by Adobe, and Muse, of course, owned by Adobe, means that you can natively place your Photoshop files right on your Muse websites, and Muse will optimize those files for the web as needed, but giving you the flexibility to make changes as needed and to take advantage of your layers. So let's take a look at a couple ways to do it. So I have a Muse website open here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna double click on one of the pages. We're gonna use this one page to put in our content. Now there's two types of uh, ways of using Photoshop files in your Muse site. The first one is the one you would expect. Uh, you go up to your file menu, you come down to place, and just like you can place your native uh, or your uh, web optimized files, such as your PNGs or ping files, your JPEGs, your GIFs, even your uh, uh, flash animations of Swift files, you can also place a native PSD. So that means that this is a, you know, it's not optimized yet, it's a native Photoshop file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place this. And I get this, the very familiar place gun, um, as my InDesign users would know, as well as, of course, my Muse users. So I can either click to place this at 100%, which is normally what I would like to do, but in this case, I do want this to come in a little smaller. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag out the file, and it's even reading off the percentage of scale for me, which is kind of nice. So if I, uh, if I let it go, let's say a little bit over the branch there, let it go right there about 47% of its original size. Okay, so once I get this file placed, I can start you know, doing Muse things with it. I can control the effects. I could even lower the opacity of it if I wanted to, make it blend on top of our other things. I can of course even add a kind of a border around it, give it a nice one pixel uh, or maybe even a two pixel border so that uh, it kind of stands out on the page. But then I look at it and I say, whoa, wait a minute, there's something I need to edit or fix inside this file. First of all, it's a little dark in certain areas. And second of all, we've got our photographer friend here. He's kind of like standing there, like maybe composing the shot. He's got a camera behind him and we really don't need him in this particular shot. So what I can do is click on this uh, and then actually right click so if I right click, there is an edit original command. This means edit the original file. And of course that means edit it in Photoshop. So when I edit the original file, it opens it up in Photoshop. And then I'm free to do whatever Photoshop things I wanna do. So no limits here. I can go in, for example, uh, we'll use our good old fashioned quick select tool we introduced in CS4. And we'll just go ahead and make a quick selection of him. Not necessarily an accurate selection, but a quick one. And we'll grab, make sure we get the camera, the hands, uh, make sure we get a little of the hair. And of course, we don't need as much of the grass in this case. So I'm holding down my Option or Alt key to subtract. And I do kind of want, I don't want an outline. So I want to make sure I get a little bit more of the wall. So we'll just go up to our Select menu. We'll modify this selection and expand it out bio for this case we'll do six pixels so now we've got him we've got the wall we've got the camera we've got his feet um, and we've got him pretty much you know selected very well so now we'll switch over to one of my favorite tools you heard me say this before the patch tool but the beauty of the patch tool is instead of it being on normal where it may or may not do a good job in this case we now have the ability to make it content aware. That's right, we can make a content aware um, patch tool. And the adapt adaptation is where you would normally start off on medium, maybe try it, see how it works. Um, and I found that very strict gives you a very accurate patch, meaning like pixel for pixel around the edges, whereas very loose kind of randomizes a little bit more, makes it more natural of a patch. So we're gonna go for very loose on this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and drag him over to an area where he, is, he doesn't exist, kind of using the wall as my patch, so to speak. And when I let go, he's been patched out of the scene. And again, very loose makes it, you know, kind of like we wouldn't know he was there unless we were looking for him, which we are, but, it did a really good job in this case on patching. 
And again, there was no extra layer. I was on the background and now he's out of the scene. But I do want to go ahead now while I've got, the, got him out of the scene, I do want to now um, lighten this image up a little bit. And of course, one of the ways we can do that, we can do it levels, we can do it curves, brightness, contrast, exposure. There's all kinds of ways to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and grab curves in this case, and I'm going to use an adjustment layer. So I just click curves. It brings up the adjustment layer right over the photo. And of course, it starts off with a neutral, you know, non-existing curve, which we can adjust. But new inside Photoshop under the hood, we've made adjustments so that you have great or better auto levels, auto curves, auto brightness and contrast. So I'm just going to click the auto button and see what it does. And auto did a really good job. It lightened up the photo without blowing it out too badly, especially in the areas where it would be blown out. Uh, but I still have the ability to manually adjust it. So if I want it even a little brighter, I can make it a little brighter using the auto as my starting point, kind of plotting that initial point for me where maybe I wouldn't have known where to put it or I would have been guessing that's the, the best place to put it. So I can go ahead and continue working on this curve, getting this curve the way I want it. And then once I'm done, I don't have to flatten. I don't have to get rid of my adjustment layer. Maybe I want to come back and adjust it further or um, get rid of it later. So I'll just go ahead and save and yeah, we'll maximize compatibility. We'll save this file and we can then just, you know, close it, hop back over to uh, Muse and Muse has already made the adjustments. So it kept my border. It kept everything I did to it in Muse, but it changed the actual Photoshop file underneath with the adjustments that we made. And we always have that adjustment layer to go back to if we want. So keeping your layers, the ability to go back and make further changes. Uh, one of the ways I also like to use um, Photoshop and Muse together is perhaps maybe a little calendar icon with the month and date. And the, the, of course, those are text layers inside Muse, where I can, or I'm sorry, inside Photoshop, where I can then go back and just edit those two layers and update my calendar each month on the website. So there are all kinds of ways to use uh, Photoshop files, especially with layers inside Muse. Now, here's another way. Um, I, when I close that Photoshop file, let's go back. There was another one that was open and that was a Twitter icon. And over here in the layers panel, I do have a couple of layers already. I have an up layer, or let's call that the composite layer. And I have an over layer. So what I really want to do is turn this multi-layered Photoshop file into a button inside Muse that when you roll over it, it turns blue. When you're not rolled over, when it's basically in its normal state, you see the gray icon. So let's head back over to Muse. And now let's go to our file menu. And instead of using place, there's a specific command. It's called place Photoshop button. That's right. It knows Photoshop. It knows what layers are. And in this case, it's saying, I know you probably want to use those layers for states of your button. So that's why we give you a special command just to do that. So when I say place um, as a Photoshop button and I go to my social media icons folder and I find that twitter.psd with its layers, I get the ability to use those uh, layers for my different states of my button. So Muse supports four states. It supports a normal, which we'll call composite. It supports the rollover state, which I'm going to use as my over layer. I could have also had two more additional layers. I could have had a mouse down state, maybe a different color when you actually click on it with your mouse, and an active state, meaning that that button is the one that's currently highlighted or active or processing. And that could have been a different color, different effect, different layer, even a totally different image. It just depends on what I do in Photoshop with my layers. So I'm only going to use the two layers I have, but note that I could have used up to four layers inside Photoshop and um, Muse would have let me assign those four layers to whatever I want. And even if the layers weren't in the same, in the right order, I could have still assigned them to the uh, objects that I wanted to do. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And that gives me the regular place gun saying, OK, I know what your layers are. I know what you want to do now. Just go ahead and place the button wherever you want. And this time I do want the button to be actual size. So I'm just going to go ahead and click. And that will put the button wherever we want it to be. I can now move it around freely, put it on top of my photo if I want, which is also kind of cool. 
And we'll go ahead and put this right about, eh, maybe right about there. And we get some nice guides to help us align it. Now, of course, um, if we preview this in Muse, it uses the WebKit engine. We can then preview our rollover, which is kind of nice. But that button doesn't do anything. All that button does is it just rolls over and doesn't, it won't go anywhere. So let's go back to design. And while that button or that object is selected, let's actually give it a link. So we'll go to our hyperlink area. We'll just go ahead and type in or pay. You can paste in if you want, HTTP colon slash slash twitter.com comma, I'm sorry, on slash Terry L. White. So twitter.com slash Terry L. White, by the way, go ahead and follow me. Uh, that'd be great. And we've got our Twitter link already ready to go. So we can, uh, we can choose other links that are inside the um, site. So maybe you want to go you have that link go to a different page. We can also use anchors on the same page and have it go maybe further down the page. Or we can use our hyperlink um, button over here or options to control other aspects. So we can say open that in another window or tab and we can give it a title. So you can make it nice and official as people hover over it so they know what that button does. Okay, so we've basically taken care of the cleanliness of the uh, code and button by doing all that. And we can, of course, preview it in Muse. But one of the other options that people like to do is actually preview this in a browser so they know exactly what they're going to get. So we'll just choose File, Preview Page in Browser. That will take us out to our default web browser in this case. I normally use Chrome, but I hadn't changed this over from Safari, but that's fine. And there's my rollover, there's my Photoshop file, and if I click, it should open it up in a new window, taking me to my Twitter page. So it does in fact work when I publish this site, my rollover, my nice Photoshop button, and my nice Photoshop file will be rendered out as a JPEG in this case, and all set and ready to go. So that's how we can use Photoshop and Muse together. You can place your native Photoshop files with layers or add additional layers as you go. There can be adjustment layers. You can go back and forth and make changes all you need. And Muse will keep track of that latest Photoshop file and therefore render out the latest JPEG, GIF, or whatever it needs to uh, going out from the web when you publish or export to HTML. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Once again, thanks for watching.